All right. Um, welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining our Wavefront webinar this month. My name is Caroline, and I'm with Wavefront. Um, and before I turn things over to our presenter, Steve, um, I want to take care of a couple quick housekeeping items. So um, first of all, you should note that we are recording this webinar. Um, and so we will make this available to you tomorrow um, in, a, via, a, in an email. And so you will have this recording to be able to review and to rewatch as often as you want. Um, second item to note is that we will be doing um, questions and answers throughout this presentation. Um, we will have, we'll save the last 10 minutes specifically for questions, but if at any point throughout the presentation, you have a question, just um, open up the chat box down at the bottom. Um, if you click on the bottom of your screen, there's a chat window, um, type in your questions there. It'll send your questions to the panelists only. Um, so we will be able to answer your questions as we go. Um, so with that, I'm gonna hand things over to Steve Tilden and he will uh, present himself and uh, get going. Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Good morning um, or good afternoon, whatever may be the case. Um, like Carolyn said, we're gonna take a look at Wavefront today. So I'm gonna try and keep it to as few slides as possible. Um, I don't believe in death by PowerPoint either. Um, and like she said, you know, feel free to you know, interrupt me and just kind of jump in with questions. We want to make sure that uh, you guys get everything answered um, and that you have a good understanding of the value the Wavefront brings um, by the time we're done. So feel free to jump in. Um, so what is Wavefront? Um, Wavefront is really your first pane of glass, um, really that entry point for better cloud application and environment monitoring and observability. Um, it's intended for uh, several different groups of people. So our customers range from everything from SRE, um, organizations within large application deployment infrastructure to tech ops and DevOps and a blend of all of the above. Um, people use it to remediate systems, um, auto scale, um, or even just get simple alerts to ops, et cetera, um, you know, kind of create those remediation paths, if you will, in your normal systems today. So things like Slack and Ops Genie and that kind of stuff. Um, Wavefront is a very powerful platform that provides a very rich set of visualizations and you can literally create any alert and we're very proud of the platform we created. So you're going to see me create some intelligent transformations that are a little bit smarter than asking something so simple like you might have done traditionally like is the cpu high or you know is memory being used etc um, and really um, you know one of the first things we're going to look at is the large width and breadth of integrations and we really allow you to see into every single corner of your cloud application it's really full stack analytics so whether it's a, a database system or code itself, which you can send us metrics directly via SDKs or our built-in distributed tracing, um, you know, or our intelligent alerting. Um, every corner of your application really providing that holistic observability um, of your environments, your cloud applications, and your cloud estates. So our, what does success look like? Work, uh, way Customers are can be very large. You see a few in the list here: Workday, Lyft, Box, and to it. Um, we list a few of these users out because a lot of times these users are those SRE organizations, the DevOps groups, and um, in many instances, developers themselves um, using our SDKs or um, you know uh, instrumenting their applications or even just providing the holistic observability for the application of the systems themselves in order to remediate. Um, and they use us holistically in order to power their applications. Um, and what we really are providing to all these people are self-service, real utility that provides real um, remediation capabilities, things like a, um, a Kubernetes, um, horizontal pod auto scaler adapter that allows you to actually auto scale based on any metrics that you derive from your estates. Um, and it really provides a, a data driven collaboration between your users. So 
Something we see quite commonly is that SREs, DevOps, developers all work together using Wavefront in order to remediate and diagnose underlying issues very rapidly. Um, and they're able to collaborate very easily. And I'll show you a little bit of that as we get through the demo. So the Wavefront difference. The first thing's really, you know, up here in the upper left, it's performance and scale. We support real-time response and our query engines transform the data. You're going to see me doing some transformations. They perform, they actually do those transformations in real time. We're very proud of our performance and scalability. We're the highest performing, I believe, um, observability platform out there. Um, our largest customers, like Workday, the one you saw on one of those previous slides, um, I believe they're up to around 1.3 million metrics per second that we're ingesting for them. And every second, we take 1.3 million metrics in, um, and we're able to query that not just over the past day or the past hour or the past week. We can go back a year and a half, a year, six months, and truly transform that data live all the way down to second by second granularity. So truly performance and scale is a huge wavefront difference. Again, you've heard me mention intelligent monitoring. Um, we call this intelligent monitoring because you'll see that with the power of the wavefront query language and the power of our analytics, I'm actually able to ask much smarter questions of my data. I'm able to discern much more specific things than something so ephemeral or, or, or uh, generic as CPU or memory or something like that. Um, and we have um, iterative investigations, so we can slice and dice the data. We, pr we provide full support for adding large amounts of metadata, essentially, you know, exploding out your cardinality, but allowing you to see into that data much more intelligently, uh, much more meaningful to you as a business, being able to look at it and kind of track that back to what um, those systems, those departments, those services, um, those transactions that mean something to you as a business. And again, you know, never lose that meaning. It's very important. One second resolution, no aggregation, and we retain for a large amount of time. Um, so big, big differences in Wavefront. That's all the slides I had. So we'll jump right into the live demo now. Let me just uh, minimize this here. Get my Zoom window out of here. All right. So the first thing I I'd like to talk about when we're looking at the Wavefront platform is our integrations page. Um, this is a list of easy buttons, if you will, that really show you how to move data and get data to really start flowing into Wavefront and out of Wavefront for use and consumption in dashboards, uh, intelligent alerts, or auto remediation systems, or even just alerts like Slack, Ops Genie, et cetera, Jira. Um, and we see we've got a few kind of popular ones up here at the top are featured integrations, Amazon Web Services, AWS, we've got GCP, Azure, some Kubernetes, uh, and your standards, Linux host, Windows host. And we even got a vSphere integration for your um, on-prem or infrastructure environments. But if we scroll down here, you see that we have a huge wealth of integrations for various systems, everything from web systems like WebSphere or Tomcat or Nginx uh, to all those different cloud-based services and systems you might utilize in GCP or AWS, um, data stores, um, even things like messaging, so ActiveMQ and Kafka, um, or other monitoring tools as well, things like Splunk or log data or um, a collect D, or maybe even you already have some Prometheus stuff rolling in your environment. You just want to stream that to Wavefront and use some of our advanced analytics. Um, you'll also see some interesting things like DevOps tools, alert notifications, and application instrumentations. These allow you to get that data back out or flow data in variously to do different things with it besides just looking at charts or getting intelligent alerts. Um, so you might want to, for example, auto remediate or create a ServiceNow ticket um, or an Ops Genie ticket to remediate a machine automatically so that no one has to go in and look at a dashboard, then go and create a ticket manually. Uh, we can do that automatically out of Wavefront. So let's take a look at one of these guys. Let me scroll back up to the top. You heard me mention AWS. I think everybody's kind of familiar with that one. Um, if we take a look at the setup page here, and I click on this big green button to set up my Amazon integration, 
you can see the quick and easy seven simple steps it takes to really turn on this integration, start getting that data flowing into Wayfront. It's real simple. Just log into AWS and get into access management, create a role for us. Um, so just you know, kind of identify someone for us, give us the right permissions, um, review everything, make sure it's cool. Um, and essentially give us that ARN, put it right in here, that role name, that thing, the bucket names you want, any prefix you want to add and boom, everything starts flowing from AWS. Now, once we have that, once we turn that on and we have some of these, you see I have some AWS uh, accounts and stuff set up here. What we get with that is a very rich wealth of dashboards out of the box and available the moment we turn on any of those integrations like AWS or GCP. And you can see right here, I've got just a ton of different dashboards right out of the box that are available that I can look at for any of these various AWS systems. But if I start from a global view, um, you might see something like this. Spinning little globe, and it shows all of my things here. I'll just kind of pause this for a second. It shows all of my data centers that are currently alive. So what you're looking at is an actual visualization that shows the reflection of my systems and my instances up in AWS. Let me click on one of these guys here real quick. I'm just going to jump into US West 2, and we'll take a look at what I get. So Wavefront provides these out-of-the-box views of your entire AWS infrastructure in a state. Um, if you go into a specific um, availability zone, like I did in US West 2, you'll get kind of an instance by instance view of all your stuff. And by default, we're going to graph these and give you some immediate metrics that you can use just to roll your mouse over and kind of get a quick check on the systems. Um, we're going to sort it by those metrics. So we'll kind of put your hot boxes, if you will, um, right up at the top, and you can see right over here, I've got them pegging at 100%, so of course they're showing red. Uh, but we can break this out by different things. We can group the different instances. So I'm just going to choose role. Um, and these are the roles that I've assigned out there in AWS. So now I've kind of got these same instances, these same EC2 instances, but they're organized a bit differently, and I can get a better visual view. I, I see I've got my one box environment, um, all my DB servers, QA, an app server, some management, and I've got a whole bunch of no rules out here um, that DevOps and Dev use to roll things variously, do their work as they go throughout the day. I can also change what I'm graphing. So it doesn't have to just be CPU utilization. I can use this view to look at other things. Um, like for example, if I look at disk write ops, if I look at disk write ops, I get kind of a different view and you'll see that we actually use that as that heat mapping now to change my view. And I can see that now my real hot box when it comes to disk write ops is, is this one box right here. Um, now beyond the kind of global view at the top you get of your instances, down below we have a lot of very detailed data about this particular data center. Um, so everything from our CPU utilization, our P99s on disk reads and storage and network, et cetera, um, to things like the top 10 uh, machines for network in or top 10 machines for network out. Uh, we have things like our elastic block storage. So we can immediately see into this without having done any work or set up any dashboards, um, kind of where our um, storage or EBS storage is um, the most um, in our environments. And you see we have these nice little uh, percentage charts that kind of show you the P99s and the P95s of everything from disk reads to disk writes, uh, you know, all, all of the information you might need to kind of get a quick glance view or that higher level picture of what's happening in your AWS environment. So let's talk about um, some of those smarter transformations and what we really do when we're tackling observability, when we're looking at monitoring, APM, distributed tracing, all this stuff to try and get a view into our systems or our states, what are we really trying to do? Well, we think the main purpose is, is to really remediate issues, stab them off if you can ahead of time, and really raise that customer satisfaction level. 
I mean, in the end, it's all about the customer. It's all about the application, your ability to deliver it. Um, so in Wavefront, we provided a variety of different mechanisms along with the power of the platform and that very advanced query language to allow a user of the system to really discern what's going on. Now, again, we're very scalable and we allow you to pass in many different pieces of data, metadata, if you will, on the various metrics that you're streaming into Wavefront. Um, so things like uh, the environment or um, you know, which particular application server availability zone uh, you're looking at. So we can do things like um, break this data down by customer or app server. Well, let's talk about what I'm looking at first. I'm looking at essentially a, a series of transactions. And these are really requests in my application. And I'm looking at a rate of change essentially in this chart. And I can see it very clearly that my rate of change is going down. Right now my, my transactions per second are dropping. And it turns out they're dropping at a rate that's just over 10% at least, right about here. And that's firing one of our alerts. So we set up alert on this rate, on this rate of change. Um, and now we know, we can see this very clearly, that our transactions have dropped by a little over 10%. But because we've flown in those um, other dimensionalities, because Wavefront allows us to do that, I can slice and dice these things by all these little guys up here. So we can look at it by customer and kind of break that line out and very rapidly see that all customers are affected. This is not something that's just particular to a certain customer. Um, we could break it out by other factors too. Anything we really wanted to stream in about this particular data. Um, we can look at it by app server. And by doing so, we get a little lucky. We actually look at this and we're able to see that really we've only got one guy that's misbehaving. And if I look at my legend over here, you see the highlighted one down there is app five. So it appears like this guy, app five, is our only bad actor. And we were able to see that because now we, we split it out by application server, some additional dimensionality we sent in, and we can clearly see that delineation. So now that I know that app five is, is my bad seed, if you will, my bad apple, I'm gonna select that, and I'm gonna populate all the data over here with stuff from app five. Now, what I have over here is just a, huge variety of metrics and system information that I've sent in on my application servers. I've done this purposefully because I don't know what issues I'm gonna see in the future. I didn't have a crystal ball to look forward and say, I don't know what's gonna blow up or what the developer's gonna do. So what we've done is we've thrown all the information in case an event that we can't anticipate comes into play. We've got everything from cache requests, network packets sent, disk bytes written, every kind of thing you can imagine, including if I roll this guy up over here, you'll see I've got my actual transactions per second. We can see that on app five, indeed, that is that metric that's correlating. We focus down into that. Now, Wavefront allows us to do some pretty powerful things from here. We can do stuff like uh, predict what trend might be occurring in the future. We have built-in Holt winners prediction algorithms. Or we can do things like moving correlations. So look at this line over here in this chart, take that and find any other lines or any other trends in all of this data that might look similar, that might have a similar trend up or down to what you're seeing over here. And we built that into this dashboard. So I'm able to just come in here and say, hey, correlate my transaction count um, with the correlation chart. So just take that and do just that. Do that moving correlation and tell me what you see. Immediately, Wavefront's able to determine that I have an issue. It's went through all that different data that I plucked in and you know kind of shoved and dumped into um, Wavefront about all of my application servers, looked at this one metric, this transaction count, and correlated every metric um, that might be related. And we can see by rolling our mouse over that what we're really talking about here is free memory and garbage collection counts. And of course, app log errors, right? So as our garbage collection is going crazy and we're dropping free memory, of course, we start logging errors out. So in a few seconds, I was able to go from, I don't know why my transactions are dropping 
to slicing and dicing that data out variously, and then even using a live moving correlation to kind of find the issue for me without having to go search for it. And traditionally, this might have been an exercise that lasted a long time. You might have had a call, might have brought in some DB guys that have their monitoring systems and they can see what's happening at the DB. Might have had some Java guys that can tell you what's going on at the app server, the garbage collection really is happening. They're seeing a bunch of errors in the logs. And you might have had a monitoring platform you're using that showed you RAM, CPU, something else, disk usage, et cetera. With Wavefront, you're actually able to see all of that holistically and even have the platform auto-correlate it for you to kind of discern what might be an issue. Now, what's really cool is I can zoom in on this guy, focus in on what exactly is occurring, and I can even synchronize my time across all this stuff. And if I want to, I just click this little guy here, and I've instantly created a short link. Now the cool thing is that short link will actually go back to this exact representation of this dashboard. Not just the KPI dashboard itself that I jumped into originally, but this dashboard broken down by app server with this particular time window and view that I've zoomed into, focused on production, the application server for the correlation chart will be on it. Everything will look identically the same. So I can take that URL now and just send it off ship it right off to my DevOps team, my SRE guys, uh, dev on call and say, hey, look, there seems to be a problem with the application, go check it out. So very rapidly with Wavefront, I'm able to get right down to that, ship that information over, and like I said originally, co you know, collaborate with that other team and give them the tool they need to jump right in, look at the issue, get some confirmation, that's what they need to look at, and get to work. So very cool concept. Now, um, see if I can hide this guy here. I have a little cool thing. Uh, I'll just close this guy. There we go. <laughs> All right. So what do we do once we've handed that off to dev on call? What do the devs do? You've heard me mention things like they're able to send us metrics directly from our SDKs. They can also dump metrics directly to our APIs if they want to just do what we call direct ingestion. So not even using an SDK, just post metrics to it directly using API tokens, et cetera. Um, out of the box though, we've recently introduced distributed tracing. So we've given developers the ability to do very little coding, very little instrumentation and get a lot of information back out of their applications. And that's what you're looking at here. We've essentially set up an environment. We have many different services running and Wavefront's able to query those services, ascertain which services I have running, and even a little bit of information about them, things like um, the frameworks I may be using, like Jersey or uh, Drop Wizard or Django for those Python guys out there. Um, so, you know, it, we're able to pull quite a bit of the framework information in, um, but if I go to my parent level service here, and I know it's the shopping service, and just take a look at some of the out-of-the-box views we provide, we also provide a ton of additional information about each and every service uh, that you might have deployed in your environment. So immediately when I jump into a particular service, I'm shown of course our red metrics, right? Our request rates, our errors, and our durations. Um, I'm also given like our top requests. So I can see our top um, requests in duration, um, how long we took, um, what we're seeing in our system, and we're giving this really nice summary view. Um, it's broken down, so we have like kind of an all traces or a global view. Um, and we'll also break it down uh, on the various service frameworks. So what are we seeing in Jersey? Um, you know, what are we seeing in Drop Wizard? And so we can kind of compare those various services, how they're behaving, even all the way down to the JVM. Now in this instance, um, I happen to be looking at a couple of issues occurring. So it looks like right now, in my current window view, I've got a couple of things kind of happening. These P95s don't look right to me. Um, I'm just gonna highlight this and zoom into this a little bit. Then I'm gonna do that same synchronized time. I'm just gonna synchronize this whole dashboard down to this issue, if you will, or this aberrant line in the chart. 
Now, as I zoomed in, of course, all my other charts filter down to that exact time range and I get a better view of the top requests and all these various different sections. Um, but I can also break down things like the detailed view, uh, the cluster I'm on, the shard, etc. cetera. Um, if I do go into a detailed view, we're able to see underneath those summaries. So see into the detail of those and get a bit more data out of the system about this event I see occurring. And as I roll my mouse over, I'm able to see immediately various different things. Again, because we flow in all those different point tags and all that different dimensionality, um, I'm able to slice, dice, view, show that wherever I want. Um, and I, I can immediately discern that it doesn't appear to be anything with a particular location. Um, I can see all these times look like they're all over 1.7 seconds. It's not a particular shard or cluster. Uh, and it's really all on order shirts. So it's either order shirts or um, looks like style, get style. So those are probably the services or the calls I want to look into. So I've got these guys down here and you can see, of course, they're showing up on my top chart. And I can just click into that method or that call and look at all of the different spans or traces for order shirts. And of course, it's carried over my time window I was zoomed into, as well as the context of my service. So not only did I jump in to my current troubleshooting exercise, but it really kept that context throughout my drill. And of course, again, I can change by cluster, shard, add filters, etc. I know from looking at that legend, I'm looking for these longer durations. So I'm just gonna filter some of this out. I see some of these here, but I'm just gonna say hey, anything over 1.5 seconds, show me all those. And I've kind of filtered all that stuff out. I've got a couple errors I can look at, but these really long durations here. If I click on one, it highlights which trace or span um, or set of spans in order to make this collection of traces. Um, is in question. And I can select that guy and immediately pops up a, a, a view of the entire set of interactions that brought me here. So as we were going through our services, of course we started at shopping. Like I said, that's the parent level service that people start at. Um, we did call style and it looks like that's the outer wrapping for all this. So seems like get style um, is okay. It really didn't take too long. But as we move down the critical path, which you can see with this orange line delineated through here, we can kind of follow where these method calls are calling other methods and how they're returning. We can see that we have a huge delay here, about our 1.5 seconds entirely in this one call. So it looks like packaging.gifwrap might be the culprit here what's causing those larger span durations. Of course, we've flown in a few other things like the application and the shard and the service and all that good stuff. Um, we can go into more details. So we can kind of look at all of that data and this would include any other data you're also sending in um, with our distributed tracing. So if you're sending in things like a uh, customer, transaction number, whatever you want, that will all show up here, allowing your developers to really see into the transaction and hopefully get an idea of why it might be occurring. Um, but I can also just drill right into the particular packaging dashboard, that particular service. So I see an issue here. Let me just drill into that and look at what I find. Again, I can slice and dice by various things. Um, and I see I have my long duration. I'm still focused in. Um, and I can see, boy, my gift wrap is really that nice long request. Um, okay, so I'm starting to get a little bit of an idea here. Let me just kind of zoom out a little bit just to make sure I'm seeing that window. Okay, so that's my guy there. And you'll notice when I roll my mouse over, all over the charts, it kind of replicates my crosshairs so I can correlate what I'm seeing this time with that time, etc. And as I move my mouse hairs over this, I can look over down here below me and see that 
all during the times where I'm getting these longer durations, it's making these calls to gift wrap and I'm getting those long second and a half um, delays added to my service responses, um, it looks like I'm getting very large payloads in my responses. If I scroll down, I can compare that to some of the other ones. You can see what a difference it is. My normal payloads are in the order of less than 1K, whereas I'm returning upwards of 6 to 10K from gift wrap. And so as a developer, I might look at that and say, well, it looks like maybe I'm not paging the results or not streaming the response right. So let me go take a look at the code. Um, so just by jumping in to already out of the box dashboards available via Wavefront's distributed tracing, I was able to drill down through my services, find out what was being affected, and actually get down to the lower level understanding of what might be occurring. And now I can just jump right into that particular area of code. Maybe even it's only a few lines I've narrowed it down to and go remediate that as a developer. So through our distributed tracing, really give the developers that ability to see into and remediate their application issues. Well, since no one's got any questions yet, <laughs> I'll go into some of the fun stuff. So this is where I really start to have fun. I really like our platform and our ability to transform data. Like I said, that, that, that number one differentiator, that performance and scalability really comes through when you start transforming data live at full resolution whenever you want. Um, it's a really cool effect. Now what I have here and what you're seeing is some data that we actually got from a customer. Because again, it's about that remediation, right? And when, when you bring data in, no application is the same. No, no set of patterns are gonna be identical. And so there's always some tricky stuff you gotta do. You've gotta you know, kind of transform your data and make it work for you so that it's, it's, it's intelligent, it means something to you, and it will actually help you move your business forward. So we have this customer data that they sent us and we, they just kind of sent it over. We quickly backfilled it. Um, Wavefront has a cool ability. We can backfill data. It's really neat. We can ingest data directly, like I said. Um, so we backfilled all this data, and their problem was that they have events that look like this. So they have this dip over here, and this they want to know about. This is the, 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 the dip in the number of HTTP requests that they get coming in. So essentially, they're front-end transactions, and they're seeing a dip in it. And they wanted to know this, but these are normal hiccups. These are load balancer, carryovers, weird little things that happen. And right now their current systems are getting all these false alerts. I mean, you can see just in this window since 4 a.m., you know, what is it like a 12 hour, 12, 12 hour window here, we get one, two, three, four, five, five false alerts and one that they wanted. So how do we bleed this stuff out? Let me copy this query real quick and we'll start working on that. Um, so now I've got a copy of this guy. You can see I've actually got two lines. They're drawn right over one another. Um, and I'm just going to start trying to see if I can smooth this line out a get, bit and get rid of these guys here. So first thing I'm going to do is just apply a moving average and see how that looks. Now, it's pretty obvious right away that a moving average is not going to get me exactly what I need. Yes, it does a little bit to smooth these dips but not quite enough to where I can clearly discern, is this a false alarm or not? Um, so what I really probably need is more of a moving median. I know I'm familiar with this data, so if I do a moving median, it out and really will be focused in my, my real event. So let me apply a moving median here real quick. And indeed, we can see the my orange line now is a nice smooth line and I've taken out a lot of those dips. So nice and neat, I've kind of got what I want. All right, I still show my current event. It's very nice, it looks good. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of my original query, and I'm just gonna stick with this line now. I'm gonna call out what's currently happening. All right, so we have our current. Now I'm gonna add another query. So I'm just gonna take this guy here, I'm gonna copy him again. But you'll notice it carries over that moving median. So now I have two lines that look identical again. And I'm going to add a lag. So what I want to really find out here is, do I have a rate of change occurring? 
right? Kind of that similar transactions per second drop you saw me do on that KPI dashboard. I really want to calculate a rate of change. So what do I need to do? I need to kind of figure out what was, was happening, what is happening, divide one by the other, and get my rate of change. I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to add a lag for this. So adding a lag is very easy. I can just come in here and say lag. It's going to default to a nice little 10 minute lag for me. Um, and immediately I'm showing. So I've got what's happening now. Um, and I got what was happening uh, essentially current and now. So everything's good. I got my little overline. Now I need to draw the difference between them. So I'm going to add a little, a little query line here. I'm going to type this one out manually. So I'm just going to say TS. Um, oops, sorry here. I'm just going to do this. Now, I've just started typing this dollar sign in curly bracket. I'm just saying to Wavefront, hey, I want to use a variable. And it's already recognized that I have something called current because I named it current. And it allows me to auto complete that. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to name this guy lag. So I'm going to take my current, I'm going to divide it by flag. And again, it auto completes, even though I just added it. And I know that this is going to show up a bit differently. This is going to be a rate of change. So I'm just going to move this axis to the right and get two axes. And I'm, it draws that line for me. And right away, I can see there's my signal. So I've taken all those false alerts out. And we've determined the rate of change, all from that simple original line of data. Um, and now I've got a clear delineation of both when an issue occurs and when it heals. And I can go create an alert off that. I can go start plugging in some auto remediation, perhaps some auto scaling. Um, so now I can go take action. Let's go take a look at that. Let's go look at what it looks like to create an alert in Wavefront. So I'm gonna jump in here. You see I have no alerts right now. I'm gonna jump in, I'm gonna create a simple alert. All right, um, I'm going to use threshold. It's kind of fun, it allows me to play with it a little bit more, preview a little bit. Um, I'll leave this, I'll say, uh, you know, transactions. I'll just call this transactions. And I'm just gonna start Typing a metric. Now I know I have something called requests dot latency. It's real easy to understand. Um, so I'll use that one. And we got a bit of busyness up in here. Um, so we can smooth that out. We can do some of those transformations to it. Um, for example, if we wanted to do like moving medians, etc., cetera, uh, we can do that very rapidly. And I'm gonna apply one of those right now and kind of get these guys smoothed out a little bit. Um, and I can start supplying some information about, oops, oh, don't roll your mouse, about uh, the various different thresholds I want to use to alert me. And I've got different uh, levels of alerting, so I can have one for severe, warning, smoke, etc. I'm just going to plop a um, guy in here and do this. All right. And I actually wanted, excuse me. Did the wrong function, but this is good. Wavefront's actually uh, previewing all these for me. So I'm going to change this to a moving max, which is really what I wanted, because I'm trying to determine if that request latency is peaking above a certain threshold, right? So are my app servers are really, I'm really kicking out, right? And I can plug in that 260 and see pretty quickly. I got this little nice severity line here, but I might want to look back, you know, kind of see. Um, where this alert might be firing. I don't know why I don't have data flowing in. <laughs> so I can plug that in and kind of see where that might fire. And I can plug in different levels um, for various levels of alerting. Um, so I can say when you get to 240, add a smoke alert. When you get to 260, things are going heinous and you really need to kind of let me know. I can change these. Um, and start glancing around. And I can see when they're variously going to fire. So you can see at this instance, I would have fired smoke. Um, at five would have been affected, ironically. <laughs> so at five is, you know, peaking on its transactions. Um, but we can preview that and kind of see that and, and smooth these guys out. 
really get to that level of alert noise, if you will, um, that we want to use that's acceptable to us. So I'm gonna kind of tune these guys out, down a little bit, and get the right amounts, um, get my alerts firing at the right spots. Maybe I'll just use 225 here. It's starting to look, okay, it's still too, way too low. I'm gonna keep it back up there at 240. Still those, mm, that's okay. Smoke's just gonna go to uh, Slack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my smoke alert to go to Slack. Now Slack's already busy, it's already noisy, it's tons of stuff going on, I don't know if you guys use Slack, but we're just gonna send all the smoke alerts there. I'm gonna give them a heads up. Hey, something might be about to occur, uh, but if it gets above 260, if I know I'm gonna encounter that problem, um, let's alert Ops. So we have an alert target here where we really go to pager duty and Ops gets alerted and they can jump into the system and take a look and remediate that issue. I can add additional information, um, add sources, other tags, et cetera, and now I can just save that alert, and now I have an alert in wait front, and I'm ready to go. So that is a brief view of the power of Wavefront and some of the various capabilities of the platform. Hopefully, I didn't go too fast or speak too unclearly. Um, does anybody have any questions for me? Okay, well, um, thank you for joining. You've all been a wonderfully quiet audience, which I appreciate. <laughs> I lose concentration very quickly. Um, I hope you all have a very pleasant day and I'll hand it back to Carolyn. Perfect, thanks so much, Steve. Um, and just for those of you online, if you are interested in trying out Wavefront, we do have free trials. Um, go to wavefront.com slash sign up um, and you can check all this stuff out yourself with your own um, custom data. Um, so we would encourage you to look at that. Um, if you have any other questions, just, yeah, feel free to go to our website. There's contact us link. Um, um, or I will be sending out this recording to you tomorrow and you can respond to that email as well. So with that, we will, uh, send you off and enjoy the rest of your day. And thanks again, Steve. Yeah, you're welcome, Caroline. Everybody have a great day. Enjoy the weather.